In this video I want to discuss the importance of color balancing or neutralizing photography before adding VFX to it. Let's begin with how we see our world. The color of an object is affected by the lighting conditions we see it in. Our eyes adapt for these lighting conditions so that we perceive a white object like snow here as white whether we see it under a yellowish illumination like this firelight or in bluish light like the night sky here. Within seconds when we're seeing it with our eyes, our eyes will adapt to a change in lighting conditions so that we see the snow as white. This is known as chromatic adaptation and it's a pretty amazing trait of the human visual system. Similarly, cameras have white balance also referred to as neutralization, meaning that we balance the color temperature and tint so that the neutral colors, that is the non-colors, the grays and the whites, appear gray or white. So let's consider how this factors into VFX work. When integrating CG elements into a live action plate, we need to first neutralize the colors on the plate photography so we can match our CG with it. For example, the bathtub in this shot appears green, not because it's actually a green material, a green bathtub, but because there is a green tint to the photo making the white tub appear green. And so if we wanted to recreate this bathtub in CG, it would therefore be wrong to make a green material or texture and it would also be wrong to shine a green CG light on it because there is not a green light on this in the photograph. Instead, we need to first color balance or neutralize the plate, apply the neutralized CG, and then invert the neutralization. So one way to do this is with a grade node. If I just make a new grade node, I'll do this from scratch, so I'll just delete these guys. I'll take out the green, take out some of the yellow, and just sort of eyeball this in. So I'm getting something that feels plausible. So again, here's sort of the greenish yellow original. Here's after color balance, which I'm doing on the grade node just in the gain. And then we put our CG little dude here over the top of it. And then I need to invert this out. So I'm going to copy this paste it into here, and then I come into here and click reverse. And that will remove the color corrections I'm doing here in the grade node, or invert them. It literally inverts them. So I'm able to take my original plate and have my CG on top of it, but I'm not changing anything on the plate. This is referred to as a reverse out and it ensures that the plate is returned to the client with the pixels untouched except for where the CG or VFX is added in. The same thing or a parallel thing is done with lens distortion being removed at the head of a comp and then reapplied as a last step before delivery. And likewise, that's why it's critical that any kind of grade that we do needs to be mathematically invertible so that we can do a, ver a proper reverse out. And this is how we do this with a grade node. However, a much preferable workflow over this kind of guesswork is when the image has a Macbeth color checker included, like we can see here. This is the common reference material for a VFX shoot, which includes the familiar chrome and gray spheres, and most importantly, the color checker. And we can use this 
color checker to calibrate the image to match the color gamut and white balance of a target color space, in this case the working space of ACES CG. And the way that we do this is with this little gizmo here called MM Color Target. This is a gizmo made by Marco Meyer. Let me just make a new one here and I will attach the source to our image. And you can see that it has these little corner pins, so we can just drag the corner pins on top of our Macbeth chart in the image to line up our circles with the squares. And I'm going to scooch this over just a little bit so I don't have the shadow from this guy's thumb blocking this. And I can also increase the size a little bit to get a better sample area. And like I was saying, we want to use the reference color space values as the target. So we're going to click on that option here and then we're going to change the color space to our working color space of ACES CG. And then I'm going to also click on normalize and this will, as you can see here, try to maintain the source luminance so it doesn't do basically an exposure adjustment and only does a color balance and more precisely a color calibration. So I click on calculate matrix and then as you can see here it creates a color matrix and you can see here the difference. This is calibrated and this is uncalibrated. You can see it's changing the colors. It's also really noticeably here changing the saturation in the image, getting it much more richer colors to come out. And if we look at this image here, I've done little intentional incorrect color balancing, giving this sort of a blue shift so that you can kind of see the, the difference that this makes. Um, let me delete these guys here and calculate this out, calculate matrix, and it's now calibrated this. And so the, again, the workflow would be that you do your neutralization using the MM color checker through this color matrix. You put your CG on top of that, and then you invert the normalization. So we just copy the node down here, click on invert, and then it reverts it back to its original out-of-the-box state. This uh, MM color target uses a Python module called NumPy that you have to also install to get this to work. However, I have installed that or set that up for Windows on my GitHub repo and also installed that on the school computers so that all you have to do is just kind of copy the files over and it should work just fine. Let's next dive into a little more detail of how that would fit into a actual VFX shoot where we're integrating CG. So we have here some different elements. I've got my film plate that I want to put my CG onto. So in the end, I'm going to be putting this little dude here into here, into this background plate. I have that same area with a chrome and gray sphere and a Macbeth color checker onto it. And then we have here a HDRI of the scene that we're going to use for image-based lighting. And all of this stuff, if you want to download these source materials, this is all part of the Foundry has this really nice course that they have for free. 
called Katana Lighting and Rendering Masterclass, and they've got a whole bunch of really great videos here, and then at the head of it they have course files, and you can download all these various things if you want to play around with this as well. So, I have here, let me put my exposure back, I have here, as I was saying, this uh, reference image, and this is shot with the same camera as the actual plate photography is shot with, but just with this little reference spheres and color checker chart in here. And I have neutralized this to the uh, target ACES color space. And you can see just at the, the richness of the colors, this is before and after. And then I have also done the same on this HDRI. So let me brighten this up a little bit here. So you can see over here in the corner, it has this here and a cool trick you can do to kind of get access to that with the MM color target is you make a spherical transform. And what I'm doing is I'm going from the original lat long into a cube map. So if I switch this over into just image, you can see the whole cube map and I want to have the looking down version, which is, if I put this on to views or faces, and then I set this to negative Y, that would be looking down, and then I can see this a little better. And then I take my color target and just line it up right there with it, and click go. It gives me then this color matrix to neutralize it. And then from that, I can do two things. One is that I can isolate out this window, again, with a spherical transform to point in the direction where the window is and then a corner pin. And then I can write that out and use that as the image for a area light. And then over here, I basically have roto painted away the window so I can replace it with this area light window in my scene and have this as my HDR dome light. All this stuff here is covered in the uh, the super great katana course. If you want to have more details about that, and then I can jump into Maya, and we have here this uh, nifty lidar scan, so we can kind of see where we're at in the room, and then we've got our motion tracked camera. Here, let me hide the. LiDAR, got our motion tracked camera here, and then these recreated Macbeth chart here, so that this is the CG render, kind of replicating the reference photo. And again, I have this area light with the HDR image in here so that I can have the image based lighting have sort of a position in space that gives me much more accurate results than sort of the older school way of just having everything at kind of infinite distances. Here I can see that this window from the LiDAR is right here and the camera is right here my object is right here and I can just have that actual proximity which gives me more accurate lighting. So let's jump back into Nuke and compare. 
we've got here our original with the uh, color matrix on it and I have here just the Macbeth chart laid in on there so you can kind of see this is already matching really nicely just this is just an over and nuke turn this off and then here we see the CG and that's matching quite nicely the one difference that you might notice is that this gray sphere is a lot darker. That's because this actually is matching this patch here. This is the patch that normally we would want to match to. So I've generated that color by going into this here, going into patch 22, sampling the color, putting that into a constant, and then writing that out, and then putting that onto the texture. But again, what I really want to focus on here is that through this MM color target, I'm getting not only a nice normalized plate, but I'm also getting an equally white balanced HDR image based lighting source to light my CG with, so it will integrate really nicely with that plate. So with that in mind, what I would do next is take this color matrix here that I have on the reference spheres and color checker and then copy that down into here so I can apply the same thing to this footage. Then I take my CG character and render them out with that HDR and put that over and then just like before reverse out I take this color matrix and invert it and then this is what I would then be delivering back to the client. So let's review the VFX plate neutralization workflow. We begin with the original plate, which in the case of this footage actually did have a green tint to it, similar to the bathtub footage we saw earlier. We neutralize the plate by calibrating the image to match the color gamut and white balance of the target color space. We likewise calibrate the HDR captured on set to the same target color space and use this to light the CG assets with the normalized image-based lighting. Finally, we invert the normalization for a reverse out workflow, returning the plate exactly as it was received, just with our awesome VFX integrated in, like it was shot that way.